Hi, this is Lucia with The Art of Love. I'm a dating and relationship expert specializing in helping you get an ex back. And welcome back, no contact army. Have you been a good little soldier or a bad little soldier? And if you've been a good little soldier, then you've downloaded my no contact app Silencio and it is helping you to stay in no contact. And you can find the link to that below this video. And if you too would like to join the No Contact Army, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button and the bell notification and you're in. And to read the No Contact Army manual, go to nocontactsecrets.com where you can download two free chapters before you purchase the book. This week, I want to talk about the five stages of a rebound relationship. Of course, the definition of a rebound relationship is a relationship that one gets into after a breakup, almost immediately after a breakup, usually within one to three months of the breakup. And the reason, well, there's several reasons why people get into breakups. So first let's talk about those and then we'll talk about the five stages. Of course, the main reason that most people know about is because People want to avoid feeling the pain that inevitably occurs at the end of a relationship. They don't want to have to go through the grief stage. And so it's easier to just jump into a relationship with someone else. Another reason is that they weren't emotionally committed to their ex. And so when you're not emotionally committed to someone, then it's very easy to just move on to someone else. And then finally, there is the fact that if there was not enough emotional connection and attraction in the relationship, then again, it's very easy to move on to someone else. And men are more likely to rebound than women because they find it tougher to recover from breakups because usually they don't have a support system and people they can talk to, women they can talk to other women, but guys usually don't talk to each other about their breakups. So let's talk about stage number one of a rebound relationship, and that would be something that's called low hanging fruit. And that is that they choose an easy distraction with no buildup of emotional attraction. And so who do they choose? Well, it could be someone they had previously friend zoned. It could be someone that they secretly had as a backup, or maybe it wasn't so secret Um, someone who had always liked them and now they're like, okay, maybe I'll give them a chance. Someone who's willing to be a friend with benefits. Someone who's easily available or someone who was always interested in them and they jumped at the opportunity when they heard that they were now out of the relationship. That's usually who people end up getting into a rebound relationship with. So that's the first stage. The next stage, some would call the honeymoon stage, but because a rebound relationship is different than a quote unquote real relationship, it's not actually a honeymoon stage. It's more of a excitement stage. And I hate to give numbers here because, you know, each relationship is different, but usually this lasts two to six weeks could be longer. And this is where the ex is excited to be with someone, to be with someone else. You don't have to worry about feeling the feelings they don't want to feel. And this is when you see the PDAs and the posts on social media where they look like they're, oh, just so in love and everything is going so well. They're the one. I found my soulmate. Yeah. What they're trying to do is they're trying to make the relationship real because it doesn't feel real and it can't because there's no emotional attachment because your ex didn't go through the grief stage. So they can't be emotionally available. And excitement isn't the same as happiness, just as junk food is not the same as real food. It's temporarily satisfying, but it's of no real nutritional value and you can't live on junk food. I mean, you can certainly try, but it's going to have some very negative consequences. The next stage, the third stage is the comparison stage. 
and this is when the excitement starts to wear off a bit and the rebound is no longer filling the emptiness that your ex feels inside. And this would actually be the best time to reach out if you need to reach out because this is when they're most likely going to be missing you. And so if you need to apologize for hurting them or if you have a strategic reason for contacting them and for that, I would suggest you set up a coaching session so you don't mess up. But if for some reason you needed to contact your ex, it would be good to do it in the comparison stage. So basically you want to wait at least six weeks after they've started dating the rebound to contact them. Because before that, they will not want to talk to you. <laughs> or if they do, they're not going to be very happy about it. Okay. So after the comparison stage where they're comparing you and the new person, there is going to be the conflict stage because comparison inevitably leads to conflict. How can it not? Especially when, again, there's no emotional attachment to the rebound. So your ex will start exhibiting behavior towards the rebound, such as being moody, fighting over trivial things, being hot and cold with them, and being non-committal. And so, of course, the rebound is not going to be too happy about this behavior and there's going to be conflict, which then is going to lead to stage number five, which is the end of the distraction. I'm not going to say the end of the rebound because not necessarily, not at this moment. But with stage five, the rebound isn't filling the void because the void was supposed to be filled with grief, but your ex swept that under the rug. However, emotions have a way of coming out one way or another. And at this stage, they start to feel the same way they did after the breakup, but before dating the rebound. So they thought that being with the rebound, they would just be able to just bypass that grief stage, but nope. <laughs> when they get to stage five, they feel exactly as they did at the end of the breakup. And at this point, they may do a few things. They may try to have you and the rebound, but of course you're not putting up with that. They may leave the rebound or they may try to make things work with the rebound. And this stage, it will usually start between weeks six and 10. But as for how long until it falls apart completely, it really depends on how much the rebound is willing to put up with. So if your ex is dating someone new, if they start dating someone quickly after the breakup, don't worry, people get so upset, they think, oh, that means that they never cared about me, they never loved me. Stop it, that's not the reason. I gave you the reasons earlier why people get into rebounds, so don't think it's about you. It's about them. People don't do things to you. They do things for them. So understand that if it's a rebound, which if they start dating soon after the breakup, it probably is, and rebounds are destined to fail because the person coming out of a relationship is in the rebound for the wrong reasons. They are trying to get something instead of give. Relationships are supposed to be about giving to the other person, not just about getting. And they are trying to nurture the same feelings they had for you and in the relationship with you. However, the feelings with the rebound are forced and superficial. And so how can it work, right? So don't worry. So comment below and let me know if your X is dating a rebound and how long they've been together and what stage you think they're at. And in the meantime, if you would like my help personally to help you through a breakup to get your ex back, to help you with no contact, you can contact me at theartoflove.net. The direct link is below and we will send you the rates. Please do not contact me on social media for the rates because we'll just send you to the, uh, the website. So just hit me up on the website first. 
And if this video has been helpful, please like, subscribe, and share. If you're listening to a podcast, please rate and review. And finally, remember that love inspires, empowers, uplifts, and enlightens.